ذاك العهد في علا من ابدع الكون سوى سبحان الله وبحمد الله ولا اله الا الله ذاك العهد في علا من ابدع الكون سوى سبحان الله وبحمد الله ولا اله الا الله من انزل الامطار فجر الانهار وانبت الازهار تزخرف الجبال من انزل الامطار فجر الانهار وانبت الازهار تزخرف الجبال ذاك العاد في علا من ابدع الكون سوى سبحان الله وبحمد الله ولا اله الا الله ذاك العاد في علا من ابدع الكون سوى سبحان الله وبحمد الله ولا اله الا الله من علم العصفور في الجو أن يطير ومن جل الغدير ودفاق الشلال من علم العصفور في الجو أن يطير ومن جل الغدير ودفاق الشلال ذاك العالم في علا من أبدع الكون سوى سبحان الله وبحمد الله ولا إله إلا الله ذاك العالم في علا من أبدع الكون سوى سبحان الله وبحمد الله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله uh, we, we begin by praising Allah and uh, we seek his help and ask for his forgiveness um, we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequence of our evil actions whomever Allah guides there is none to misguide and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray there is none to guide and, and I testify that Allah alone is worthy of worship and I testify that Jesus, the son of Mary, is the messenger of God and his word. And I testify that Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, is the brother of Jesus. He is the brother because their religion is the same religion and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him was the closest messenger the next messenger after the Prophet Jesus and today we are going to talk about Jesus our Prophet Jesus a Prophet of Islam and today we want to talk about the truth about Jesus. A truth that has been hidden. A truth that has been distorted. A truth about which and for which thousands of people have died. They have been killed and slaughtered by the opponents of the true Jesus by the opponents of the true message of Jesus by those people who have <clears throat> uttered a lie against God and a lie against the messenger of God they have lied against the creator of the heavens and the earth and they have lied against God's chosen messenger they have distorted and twisted and changed and perverted the true, mes the true message and the true teachings of the Prophet Jesus. And it is through Allah's infinite mercy, through God's infinite mercy and kindness to humanity that He sent a final messenger. A messenger about whom Jesus Himself spoke. A messenger about whom Jesus Himself told His disciples that there will be a messenger to come and his name will be Ahmed his name will be Ahmed, the praised one and that he will speak the truth 
about all matters. And that messenger, of course, that prophecy, of course, was fulfilled in the coming of the Prophet Muhammad. May God's peace and blessings be upon him, whose name, of course, as well as being Muhammad, was Ahmed. But of course, it's very easy to make claims. And this is really, brothers and sisters, and dear guests, what we are faced with. Claims. Many people make claims about many things. But claims have to be tested. Claims have to be verified. That's why we have something, a concept, that we call truth. Now, of course, the word truth underlies a concept, truth. And what is this concept, truth? What do we mean when we talk about truth? When we want to know the truth about something, what are we actually asking for? What are we looking for? What are we searching for? And on top of that, we want to find out how do we come to know the truth about something? How do we come to know truth from falsehood? How do we come to know right from wrong? And this is a question when I'm engaged with Christians that I always like to ask. I always want to know what is your criterion? What is the means that you use in order to know what is true from what is false? What is the means that you use in order to determine right from wrong? How do you know something is true and something else is not true? From where do you get that information? From where do you get that knowledge? From where do you get that understanding? This is a very important question. So I want to spend a little bit of time discussing this issue. It's philosophical in the sense that it deals with philosophical issues, but it's not philosoph philosophical in the sense that it's something beyond our understanding. We can all understand what we're talking about here. So, there are two ways, general, two broad categories, two general ways that we say we could, something could be proven to be us and known to be true to us. Okay? Now, the first way is what we could call a subjective proof. It's called a subjective proof. Why is it called a subjective proof? Because it is something that is true to the subject. In other words, it's true to you. Now this is quite often something, and I'll give an example of this, a subjective truth. For example, very often I ask Christians to prove to me that their claims about Jesus and about God are true. That their religion is the true religion. And one of the answers that is quite often given for that is that the reason that I know that Jesus is true and that he is the Lord and he is God and is because I accepted Jesus into my life and my life changed. I used to do this and this and this and then I accepted Jesus and now I became different. Those bad things that I used to do, I don't do them anymore. And that person may also talk about how they feel inside. How they feel that believing in this religion or following this belief system or whatever we want to call it has made them feel a better person, has made them feel inside. Now, that's all very good. That's all very good. And it's not something really you can argue with. Because on a personal level, that person personally feels that this is true. It's true to them. But the, the problem with this type of truth is that it's really confined to that particular individual. It's not something that is open for everybody. I don't, you, okay, you feel different inside. You feel that you've been changed. But that's not something I can experience I can't experience your feelings and I can't examine them. It's not like an I can open you up and look inside and say, oh yes, there's that feeling there. You know, I have to take your word for it. And the problem also with this type of subjective evidence is 
is that if it is really proving something to be true, if it really establishes something as truth, then surely, if it's good for you, it's good for anybody. Like we have an expression. If it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. Okay, if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. Meaning, if it works for you, it should work for everybody else. If it's true for this, it must be true for everything else. So think about it. Actually, this is a very 